What's going on everybody? In today's video, I got two Predators. These are 22 horsepowers or 670 cc's. I'm going to be showing you how to fix them. Now, the problem is, is the carburetors are gummed up. He said he pours gas or starter fluid. They start and die. So we're going to be taking off the carburetors on one of them up here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom one. But look at this setup. Two big engines right there. A nice Duromax right there. 16 horsepower, hot water heater. Now, if you guys know in the comments what you think this setup's used for, put your guesses down there. I'll tell you later at the end of the video what he told me he does. But I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know what's going on out there. Let me get this tripod up here. I'm glad this thing is super long here. So I can actually get up here and give you the rundown while I'm working up here. Just like that. I think that's perfect. So let me get my tools together. We need a 10 millimeter and a Phillips right off the top. So let's get to work. Okay. We're going to start off with the 10 millimeters. There's two bolts on top. There's one. And number two is coming right out. Got two little pieces. I'll put those right up here for now. I'll leave the bolts in here for a second. Now we got two Phillips. I believe it's just two. First one's on the left side, followed by one on the right side. And if I'm not mistaken, that should be the only thing holding this air filter on top here. Yep, comes right off. Perfect. We'll put this aside for now. Now I'll get you a look up in here. See the carburetor here. We got two 10 millimeters right there now these can be bent out of the way for the fuel line now another part of the fuel line is right here we can disconnect that with a pair of needle nose move this out of the way lift this all the way up out of its holster and then go from there i believe there's two those no those are eights there's four eights right here that hold on the intake the air intake to the carburetor so now I need an 8 millimeter, a 10 millimeter, and a pair of needle nose. By the way, if you guys like small engine repair and how to work on small engines, subscribe to this channel. I'll give you guys business tips and show you guys how to fix stuff. So also hit that like button. Let me go get my tool. Okay, I'm going to start by removing this fuel line. It is pump fueled, so we don't need to clamp it off. Now this engine, because it's up high, he actually added a secondary fuel pump to this. So when we go to actually test it, we'll have to flip a switch for a fuel pump system. Because he has a big old gas tank back here. So we put that aside. Now from here, this thing keeps leaking gas, though I might. Now I should be able to get in here. Yeah, see, I know that's going to be a pain in the ass. I'm going to clamp this fuel line. Hang on. Okay, so what I'm going to do... So I'm actually going to remove this throttle linkage clip here and then pull this throttle linkage up out of that socket. So I can get in here with my 10 millimeter and take off two bolts to remove this whole throttle linkage thing. But see now, that's one of the reasons you, sometimes people hate working on stuff like this is because if you look here, this muffler is in the way. Now, to be honest, I don't think I have to remove both. I think once I remove this one, which is about all I have room for, once I remove this one bolt here, because I can remove the muffler, but that's like overkill. I think once I remove this, as I was saying, I can just lift it up out of the way and tilt it on, its, on the one bolt. Yeah, I'm going to have to remove all the linkages too, and then I'll be able to tilt it. Which I think if I just... No, I'm going to have to... See, there's a problem. No access. I can access the top one. Like, whoever engineered this sucks. This is the throttle. The one I'm messing with right now. Now the throttle's up out of my way. We'll remove the choke. I should be able just to pull that all the way out now. Perfect. These fuel clamps aren't clamping right. Well, I might need to buy new fuel clamps. Those things do not want to work like they're supposed to. Now that I moved it up a little bit, I can undo the throttle with my Phillips. There we go. Now it's up out of the way enough to get my 
eight millimeter in there. At least I'm hoping it is. There's one loose. Now to be honest, I actually, if I'm if I'm thinking what I'm thinking right, I don't even believe I have to remove that right now. I think I can remove these two bolts holding the carburetor in and just lift it up. Two 10 millimeters. Now this is actually for the intake manifold. So when I remove this carburetor, it will be coming with the intake manifold. Now there's another clip on the choke, like the one on the throttle, to remove the choke. So once I actually get the carburetor off, I'll show you that clip. I got these two bolts out. Now it's just a process of removing everything holding the carburetor in place. There should be nothing else. Oh, oh I totally missed that one. Three 10 millimeter bolts. I wasn't even looking at this one on the top here. Long one. So it's going to be hard to mistake anything. And now I can work on removing this clip here for this choke. I got the choke out. Now I just got to remove the spring. There's the choke lever. We'll just leave it in. And there we go. I forgot about the fuel solenoid, the anti backfire solenoid shut off. There's the carburetor. You can see how gummed it is on the bottom. Yeah, that's not pleasant. Let's get this thing working out. Depending on how bad this is, I might be. Oh, I need my 8 millimeter. What else do I need? Crescent wrench, Phillips. Now I'm going to remove the throttle linkage. I'm going to go get my tools. And what I was saying was, is I might put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. But I'm thinking we can just clean it with carburetor cleaner. Like I said, there is signs of gum down here on the bowl. But now I want to remove this air intake manifold here. Normally I'd use an impact, but I left it in my wife's car. So I do not have that on me at the moment. I will when she comes home for lunch from work for the other one. But I wanted to guys show you guys this one. So for those who stuck around to find out what the heck this machine's for, and you don't want to wait till all the way to the end of the video, it's, he does jetting and pressure washing. The guy's a plumber, so that's what he uses this trailer for. It's set up pretty well, I think. And he says these things sat for about two years, so they need love. But very well kept, you know, other than the gas part. He just forgot to go out there and run them. Here's the O-ring. Which we should be able to put back in. Hopefully. Now this, I believe these go in here. These slots here so we can put the top back on. So we'll put that aside like that. Now look in here. We can see some gum. Some bad gas in there. We can see it all on the face of the carburetor. All that yellowing. So that is not what we want to see. So like I said, we're going to put a Phillips in, and we're going to put pressure towards the bit while we turn. If not, I promise you, you will strip these carburetor bolts. They strip very, very easily. So if you start to feel it not coming out, don't force it. Reevaluate. Put some lube on there. Put a little hit of heat. Hit it with a hammer. Yeah, because if you strip one, yeah, you might as well just buy a new carburetor. It's cheaper. This is a Predator anyways, so they're all aftermarket anyways. But it'd be a lot cheaper for you just to buy a new carburetor. Then drill it out, find a new carburetor bolt, and all that other fun stuff. Yeah, I just tell the customer, hey, you know, it's going to be a week. I had to order a carburetor. It doesn't look too bad in the bowl. But I do want to take off this solenoid because those stick. So we'll do that here in a second. Now looking at the float, we can see the two jets there. We'll use a Phillips for that. And the same thing, because this is brass, put pressure down while you turn. So we do not strip that brass out. Now I'll put the right one on the right side. I need a thinner flat. And the left one on the left side. But however, sometimes it doesn't matter. But sometimes it very much matters. Now I'm not a 100% expert on these Predator carburetors. But I'll take this one out and I'll let you know. It looks like they wouldn't matter. And they both look clear. So I'm thinking it's a solenoid that's trapped. So now from here, I'm just going to inspect it. Just gonna, oh, by the way, this was that clip for the choke. 
So you put the choke lever in there, clip it in, and then you put the spring right in that part. An emulsion tube came out from the left side. So it just has two jets. It's not, I don't think it matters. Two jets, two emulsion tubes. So there's the other one. I will still keep them separated. See if we can get this gasket off without ripping it. Because I do not have spare parts for this carburetor. So anything I can save. And most of the time you don't have to buy new stuff. Everything is fine on it. You just got to rebuild it. Not rebuild it, but just rework it. So everything's looking clean on here. So I'm going to put that to the side for now. Grab a crescent wrench. Now I was going to grab a crescent wrench, but a 3 4 inch is going to work fine. So that's the actual size. Now I went tighten a little bit, and then I went reverse just to pull it out. And yeah, now see, this thing should push in, but I really had to work for that. So we take a little bit of carb cleaner. We're going to spray it in there. And now from here, we're going to take pliers, pull it in and out. So I'm going to show you how I clean. Okay, we're going to take a pair of vice grips, get a good clamp on there, pull it all the way out. See? Now from here, we can spray inside here, wipe it off, put it back in. I still think that should go more in, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this one's a little different. I feel like it's stuck, though. Maybe it doesn't need to go all the way in. It goes in enough, right? Yeah. But now it's not stuck anymore, and it is coming in and out. So that's how we should have it. And I'm thinking that's all the problem was, so we can put it back in. But since we got the carburetor off, we might as well just go ahead and spray carburetor cleaner in all the holes and, you know, just give it a quick rinse off because you already have it out. Might as well spray everything that could possibly be the problem. Even though I'm pretty sure it was just that fuel solenoid. See, that one seemed a little clogged. So from now, from here, I'm going to clean this whole carburetor, put it back together, and then we're going to put it back on the machine and see if we fix it. Okay, everybody, now let's put this carburetor back in this slot. Now this is going to be the fun part, because we have to line up there's... There's a gasket, a spacer, and another gasket. Those are all pretty much lined up right there for us. We do have to connect the fuel shutoff solenoid while we go down there. So as we're slowly putting this down, we're making sure those gaskets and everything are lined up. The worst part is this fuel shutoff solenoid. They give you barely enough room to reach up there and put it in. I just dropped my needle hoses, which I need. Pinch it with those. Now, don't get me wrong. If you 100% dismantle this machine, this whole job would be easier. It would just take longer. Okay, fuel shut off is in. And this fuel line with this filter here broke, probably due to age. So I'll have to replace that. We're good. We are good. Everything is connected. I'll get my three. Now, while this thing is still leaking gas, I'm just going to put this back on. My fuel line here. i got to buy some new of those. Okay, I'm going to make sure my throttle linkage is out of the way. I can come back in there with that. Now I'm lining up these gaskets and the mounting holes. I'm going to hand start them. You hand start everything. That's my number one rule. Bring this back around to hold this gas line. Uh, now I can tighten them down. And since I'm not using an impact anyways, but you still want to hand start everything. And with this, the thing that I said is broken, carburetor's in there now, so that's good. What is this? It does go to a fuel, so it goes to the fuel pump. I think it's a vacuum line. I think it, or it's just a fuel filter. This is a thick filter. That's thick. There's media in there. I don't know if I have anything that thick. I'm going to have to go look real quick. Okay, this filter has two thicknesses. The second one is the correct one. So I'm hoping, maybe, we might be lucky here. If not, I will have to order something for this. Or fabricate something. 
Which is one thing I love about our industry is you can build stuff that you need to. Like if you look at Terrell, you know, he builds all sorts of stuff that makes his life easier. And sometimes just building or even plastic welding it, fixing that one until I get a new one in. Because a plastic weld is not a permanent fix. And I honestly think this will work. I just need to actually put a fuel clamp on it. I think these clamps are too loose. But for now, we will see. That looks good. So, loop this clamp back around. We'll put the throttle linkage back in. There we go. Put the clip back on. Throttle linkage is back on. Now I'm doing the choke one. Okay, the clip's back on. Now I gotta put the spring in. Spring is in. It got disconnected over here. The spring is connected there. Now our cables can go back on. This is throttle, so this one goes in this one. I forgot my Phillips again. Since we took off the carburetor, so I'll be right back. Here comes throttle cable. It's in place. Now I'm going to tighten this Phillips with a pair of needle nose. I'm going to have to get an offset screwdriver. But as we're doing that, I'll go ahead and put the choke one in. Since that one we can do. And then we'll actually try to run it. To make sure everything is working. I do not need to put the air filter back on. To test it. That's in place. Tighten it down. Feed that back through the hole. Choking. Working. Okay, let me get an offset. Tighten up this throttle and let's test it. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to see if this thing starts and runs and stays running. So we said there's a switch here. You hear a fuel pump running? We're going to choke it out. Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Just beautiful. Oh, i got to turn off that fuel pump. Let me show you guys that, too. That looks That's pretty cool. But this is done. This is a job well done. One of two. I'm going to do the other one off camera. I'm going to put it on the top. And we got one done. Here's this fuel pump rig. Which is over at the door is actually where the fuel pump is. So let me give you a little tour of this whole thing. So I think it's pretty cool. Right here is the fuel pump. I like it. I think this thing's badass. Let me know what you guys think. But other than that, that is mission accomplished, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, you've got to make sure you hit that follow button, hit that like button, share with a friend. All that good YouTube stuff. You made it to the end of the video. I love you. Leave a comment down below. Have a good day.